All right, everybody, just got here to my favorite local card room, the House Club Poker Room and Lounge. Uh, I'm getting ready to play the Monday night $60 freeze out. Uh, I haven't checked the clock yet to see how many people have uh, already entered. Um, but I think I'm coming in pretty late because I had class tonight. It's Monday night's tournaments. These are the type of tournaments where people can't rebuy and you have to play as solid as possible. Uh, you have to play your position really well. Uh, you have to pick up on people's uh, mannerisms and movements. You have to read the table really, really well. You have to know who has the big stacks, who has the short stacks, who you can play against and who you can't. And hopefully good chip stack and make it to the final table. So. Uh, we're gonna see what happens here. I'm, I'm feeling good about it today. I think I'm gonna win some money. All right, we'll check it out. So I come in and get my stack of 20,000. Blinds are already 1,000, 1,500 with the big blind ante. Uh, I'm under the gun plus one and look at pocket sixes. Pretty decent. Uh, so I go ahead and call. The two blinds also just call. Everybody else folds and the flop comes out pretty cool with a king, king, seven. I don't particularly hit this flop, but it really hits my range. I could very well have a king here. Anyway, it checks to me. I go ahead and lead out for 2,000 uh, and both of the blinds fold and I go ahead and take down a small pot to start the night. A couple of hands later, I'm in the small blind. Uh, a couple of calls, actually. Nobody's raised. I look down at 8, 9 off. Three players have called, so I'm getting a really good price to see a good sized pot. I go ahead and make the call, put out 500 more, and see a pretty cool flop of 10, 9, 3. Now that's going to give me a middle pair uh, with the back door straight draw. Uh, there's no uh, flush draws or anything else like that out there. Uh, so I check, checks around, and the button just opens shoves. He's got about 10k in his stack, so I have to go ahead and fold this. I uh, can't really see it for that price. A couple of hands later, a pretty interesting situation happens. Uh, I look down at pocket jacks. Uh, but I noticed that the dealer accidentally dealt in a player who wasn't set down yet and he was going to be in, a, in the place where the blind, small blind just was and he wasn't supposed to be dealt in. Um, so there's some table talk going on, but you can see that I have my raise counted out, ready to go, ready to bump it up. But unfortunately, the floor comes over and says, yeah, that is a misdeal. So can't make anything with uh, pocket jacks, unfortunately, but you know, it's still early in the night, so we'll get some more action later on. Here we are a couple hands later, we look down at ace-10 under the gun plus two. This hand's just a little too strong to fold and a little too weak to raise. So we've been seeing some cheap flops so far tonight, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to see a cheap flop with this hand. Possibly hit something good, um, kind of see how the table reacts. I am in position of the blinds like I was earlier, so if it's just the blinds call, maybe I can make a quick move and take down another pot. Unfortunately, that's not what happens. A player in late position goes ahead and jams it all in there and I just kind of can't call. Uh, so we just kind of have to let the ace 10 go for now. All right, here we are a couple hands later. We are in the big blind, uh, which is kind of a terrible place to be because the blinds are so aggressive and uh, we have that big blind ante. So you're basically posting two blinds every time. However, we get a three few callers and I look down at a beautiful queen queen pocket queens, the ladies, we love them. Uh, anyway, I think there were four callers and there's just so much in the pot already. Blinds are so aggressive. I only have about 10 to 15 big blinds behind. I decided this is a perfect time to go ahead and shove it all in and possibly get called by uh, maybe a worse hand. Um, uh, I def just definitely don't want to go up against a four or five players uh, with this kind of hand. It's too easy to be outdrawn on. I'd rather go ahead and shove it all in and pick up five, six extra big blinds right now. Um, so luckily that's what happens. Everybody goes ahead and throws their hands away and uh, I see a little, nice little increase to my stack. Did you look at my cards? Uh, 
Okay, so here we are a couple hands later on the button uh, where I'm dealt 9-7 offsuit. This is a pretty cool hand to, situation to be in. Basically, if you can see a cheap flop on the button, you always want to do it. Um, you can hit a lot of open-enders, you can hit some straight draws, some backdoor flush draws, two pair type of hands, trip hands, uh, and it'll always be disguised when you're on the button, so you really want to take advantage of this. So we see a flop four ways, and the flop comes out king of clubs, ten of diamonds, eight of clubs, which is going to give you a backdoor flush draw and an open-ended straight draw. Unfortunately, a player in early position just open shoves it all in, and there's really nothing I can do because I don't want to call off my stack with uh, just a couple of draws. Now, they are good draws, but I just can't justify seeing it right now. So I go ahead and just let this one go. right before the second break the last couple of hands of the level with 100 or 1000 1000 blinds with 500 small blind there's three players and i lead out for 2000 after they check and take it down so I immediately get a little bump to my stack which is great a couple hands later uh there were, we bumped up a couple more players came to the table and they announced that a new player was coming to the table and I noticed that the dealer accidentally dealt in the new player, even though he was the in between the situation where there's gonna be the button where the small blind should be. And he accidentally dealt that guy in. Anyway, I looked down at two jacks, but I knew that it was gonna be a dead get anything from that. Uh, a couple of hands later, uh, I'm in the big blind and it's now 1200, 1200, 600. So there's already 3000 in the middle at the beginning. Down at... No, uh, there were three, maybe four callers of the blinds. So it comes back to me and nobody's raised, which means that everybody's got kind of middling type of hands. I just found 10 to 15 big blinds in my stack that that is a really good time to just shove it all in and maybe get called by a worse hand, but I definitely don't want to go against, you know, four or five players on a board with, with a hand that's strong. So I rip it in, and kind of luckily, I guess, everybody folds. Um, that's one of those situations where you definitely don't want to be out of position with a big hand against a lot of players. But I think it's the right move. I could have probably done like maybe, I don't know, six to $10,000 bet somewhere and left myself a little bit behind. But I guess what I want to do there is look as strong as possible so that everybody folds and nobody can outdraw me because, again, this is a freeze out, there's no rebuys, and the registration is closed after this. So there's a pretty good little prize pool going on. I like my table draw. I have my arch nemesis who took me out of the WSOP tournament we played a couple of months ago uh, when I busted in fourth place on the bubble. Uh, he's two seats to my left. So we'll see what happens. So coming back from break, I have about 15 big blinds in my stack, and I'm in middle position. I look down at King Jack of Diamonds, which is just a beautiful hand. 
<clears throat> I need to raise here to kind of thin the field and hopefully hit the board really hard. So, uh, not thinking about it as much as I should have. I only make it 3,600, where it should have been probably around 5,000. But, you know, it is what it is. I was in the moment. So, I pick up two callers. The uh, player to my left who has a massive stack uh, just calls. Um, and then it folds around to the small blind who also just calls. Um, coming up now, we see just kind of a great flop comes out for us. Uh, the flop is deuce of diamonds, four of clubs, and three of diamonds. Uh, so we've got the second nut flush draw and two overs. Um, so I'm thinking I'm doing really well. Unfortunately, what happens is the small blind shoves all in for 18.2 thousand. There's only 13.6 in the pot right now. Um, so he over shoves. So I'm thinking a couple of things right now. The first thing I'm thinking is, would he do this with like an ace five, like a nut type of hand or a five six? Would he do this with a made hand, like a straight? Would he do this with uh, his pocket aces, pocket kings, pocket queens, these type of hands? Or would he try to get a little value out of them by slow playing them? Uh, basically, I hem and haw for a little while, and I more or less uh, am thinking about it for a while and come to the conclusion that he's probably only doing this with like a mid middle type of pair, like seven, sixes through tens maybe, uh, or a lower flush draw. So I decided to go ahead and just call which turns out to be the right move because uh, the player in small blind shows that he has queen nine of diamonds. So he's got the lower flush draw and is drawing to only six outs. Unfortunately, he hits one of those outs on the river, which is the queen of clubs. So, you know, sometimes you get outdrawn. Sometimes you make the right call and it's still wrong. Uh, going back, uh, again, I probably should have raised a little bit more preflop, but you know, what are you gonna do? I had a good time, uh, there he is. Uh, good time, the players are always great, I love the club, and uh, you know, I got to play some poker, so I'm happy. Um, so, we will see you guys next time. I was in middle position, I had uh, around 15 big blinds, I looked down at King Jack of Diamonds. This is a good position to raise, uh, so I raised to 34. 600, which is just over two big blinds, not quite three big blinds. Uh, and I pick up two collars, the big blind folds. Um, so there's pretty good pot going, and the flop comes out deuce, three, four, with two diamonds, uh, which is a great flop for me. Now, unfortunately, what happens is the small blind open shoves for 18,000, and so he has me covered. And I think about it for a little bit, I count on my chips, realize he's got me covered, and I realize, I think about it too, that this guy would likely do this as a move. He wouldn't do this with the nuts right now. He wouldn't do it with an ace high flush right now. So I'm thinking that he might have some kind of like middling pair or some type of lesser flush draw. Him and Haw uh, eventually make the call to find out that I'm good. He actually has uh, queen nine of diamonds. So I'm drawn live to six outs. The turn is a beautiful ace of clubs, which actually gives me even more outs because, well, no, it doesn't give me any more outs. Uh, the queen of clubs, the king of ace of clubs, unfortunately, the river comes a queen of clubs, which is one of the six cards left in the deck that can actually take me out. Uh, pretty straightforward call there, um, especially when you think about him shoving so light, which he was, and I was right. It was the correct call. Um, but that's <laughs> poker, is that sometimes you can get it in good and it's still no good. What are you gonna do? Uh, I live to fight another day. Hopefully I'll come back a little bit more refreshed next time. I didn't bring my hoodie with me this time, which uh, was a little, weird because it's a little chilly in there sometimes so the hoodie keeps me from shaking because I have a tendency to shake a bit when I'm cold and nervous <laughs> uh, but I played a couple of good hands and well we'll see you next time so as soon as I get back in the car I realize why I didn't win tonight and why I got unlucky on the river I did not take the new card protectors that my wife bought me All right, this is Ren Ren and Stimpy.
I'll take them next time and see if they bring me the luck.